ரஞ்சன் தங்கக்கூடிய படுக்கை அவங்களுக்கு மாற்றி வசதியோட நாங்கள் செஞ்சு கொடுத்துருக்குறோம் இது இன்னைக்கு சிம்ஸுக்கு ஒரு அடிஷ்னல் வெதர் இருக்கும் இன்னொரு செயற்கையாக நாங்கள் வந்து பார்க்குறோம் இதனால் இந்த கேன்சர் ட்ரீட்மெண்ட்டில் போன் மேக பண்ணுறவங்களுக்கு எக்ஸ்பென்ஸ் பண்ணி ரொம்ப நாள் இது பண்ணுறது ரொம்ப கஷ்டப்படுறாங்க அதை ஒரு அருமையான டெக்னிக்னால் அவங்க வந்து விலை குறைவாகவும் அஃபோர்டபுள் காஸ்ட்லேயும் அதை வந்து அவங்க பண்ணிக்கலாம் அது எங்களுடைய விருப்பம் டாக்டருடைய விருப்பம் எங்கிட்ட சொன்னார் நாங்கள் அதன் அடிப்படையில் இந்த தேட்டரை ஓப்பன்
After yes. 0.3 micron, you can filter the air, the okay. particulate matter will be filtered. We have a glass floor uh, accommodation as well as any basic railings. They are following the same norms. Well, I'm glad it's much more about the land on the first three. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. the decisions I had to make yeah. on investing in people. Yeah. 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 Well. Yeah. Yeah. Two rooms like that we have, one more anti room. Because, the because we, we gave them treatment where the uh, immunity goes down, white yes. cells goes down. Yes. And yes. Stays low for two weeks. Mm -hmm. So, two weeks is a tough time to handle. Mm -hmm. They develop infection. Mm -hmm. They may not be from outside, but you can get infection from your own intestine. There are a lot of bacteria there. I know we're going to do some of the heat about this as well. Yes. Yes. Um, um, on the red cell and white cell, and yeah. about having proper um, yeah. isolation yes. and again the flow as well. So, oh, yeah. This is the first time I'm seeing Yan there go in the room, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, they will be comfortable. <laughs> so, uh, straight up the yeah. The material is completely all in. All the material is anti fungal to the but yeah, it's any material to yeah. all. Like from so, the where the dust mm. won't settle. Mm. So, that has to be cleaned regularly and it should be like. Minimize the risk so of getting back in the community corporates and shoppings. It's easy to wait for the corporate is just going to be a good thing. So, no stress in the corporate, I think. Oh, it's a good thing. So, I'll look back at it now. Well, there's no recess at all. There's no more than the corporate. Yeah, the other side of the thing that is here. Thank you. And this is the question you should have. It's a case of seeing the professor, director of the program, Dr. Suri Narayana, senior vice president, Dr. Raju Shishami, vice president, Dr. Ashwin, Dr. Suresh, Dr. Ranjan Mahapatra. Today's is the main hero of the program. You all know about SRM and SILS. I have almost 17 years of experience in this field of medicine. We are seeing the various categories of people from various parts of India. Like socially, economically, poor, and from the weaker section. At the same time, we see the rich and comfortable position the people are coming to hospitals. In a career, first 10 years, I have seen the poor people who are coming for the medical college treatment, for the various surgeries, or various, various problems. Now, with this experience, I found one thing is compulsory. If for the patients to get cured, that is, we have to start one institution in the form of uh, Sims Institute for Medical Science because it is not neither a corporate hospital or an education. Thing. So when we join these two things together, what happens? The doctors are doing research activity, we come into the present scenario, what is the medicine or the, what, is the, what is the latest technology they are using throughout the world. It is, they want to learn. So once it is a hospital, if it is a simple hospital, what happens? I pray, finish my doctor, program, either an MS, MD or MS. After just only practicing, 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 once I finish that, when they are only to the theatres or the 
whatever they are practice, whatever they do, the consultancy also. But my thing is, our doctors in Sims, last seven years we started, we have touched 1.25 lakhs people like with lower economically poor and the rich people all together. But this institute after I started, I am very much lucky. I have expert doctors and broad minded. They want to learn. They say I am giving permission. It's not like that. They, the team, the Ryan Institute doctors are excellent team. They are open minded. They want to learn, learn, learn. Nobody is in the Sims having, already I am a big person in the world or the country. I, I won't learn anything, but my real doctors, my strength is people will see the infrastructure. That is one part. As a, as a man, we have money, we can invest in anything. It comes as infrastructure. But really, I appreciate my doctors. I'm very lucky to have these people on my board. They are willing to learn the techniques. Today, what you, know, what you want to know about the other country or other world is having. You name the thing they know and they want to go and learn it. What, that's what we are interested in signing emojis or other things. Whatever you say, they are willing to learn. That is needed for this. Our most of the time, the hospital, it is not there. If you see our operation in theatre, all the theatres are here, all the latest equipment. That means when I started, I would have said in the year, first, first year, we are in the latest equipment. What is the other thing? Every year, every minute, they are upgrading their techniques and the knowledge. Everything to the to serve the people. That is the concept of the institute. That is the success of the Sims. Our Sims success is learning, learning, and if you learn, go on learning. With this, they want to develop this institution to the next level. Next, we are also thinking, you know, Dr. When I speak, spoke to Mr. Ranjan Patra, he wants this theatre. I asked him, what is the cost? What way do you want? How will it He said, it's nothing, sir. It's my passion. So if this theatre is mostly an 100% bill for satisfaction to serve the purpose of society. So all the doctors, you see, what are the equipment? Last year, we, we, one year back, we might have come for the robotics system. We bought the robotics for eight crores. That is, the doctors wants to do the best and do the thing. So like that, we go with the interest of the doctor. As a management, we support the doctors for the best things what they do. And we are mutually benefited. They are giving good in return. They are doing this uh, very good uh, service to the community. And it will go on. It will go on. Thank you very much. Other side remains closed. So other yes. side remains closed. Yes. Yeah. So we open the other way, just like. Yeah. Urgent transplant. We can't be tiny waiting list. That's not possible. We can't drug cancer patients because it comes back faster. So there are the priority basis we have to prepare. We are expecting a couple of phases in the month. Okay. So that they stay two weeks. What is that in terms of maintaining skills as well? Uh, that's enough in terms of for you and your team to maintain skills to carry on providing the same level of expertise. Okay. I should be all part of the same international registry as well for matches, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've given a sample. Oh, so I could be a match with someone in another part of the world. Because it's um, really yes. and they host the, the, the registry for them and they also want to use it. If there is more demand for it, we will have more units. Mm -hmm. So the whole less can be converted to transplant grows. So what about donors? Do you have any problem finding donors? See, we, mostly we get their own siblings. So that's okay. Yeah. Otherwise, we have Indian registry yeah. on that basis. Yeah. So we have, maybe the number is not very high. Okay. Uh, but those who come from abroad, they have already got the donor mm -hmm. international registry. Mm -hmm. They come here. And oh, okay. We have already done a year in previous centers. Yes. But here, maybe we have to look for that. First, we have to do more cases so that internationally we are recognized that yes. yeah. patients can come here from us. I mean, a donor can come and donate if it's established transplant chain. At least six, seven cases in a year is taken as a transplant chain. Fascinating seeing the development of all the things that are very, very similar in a modern health service anywhere in the world. You should see our thinkers, we are completely fully equipped, let's say, because we have also been reaching every area. All the equipments, all the equipments.
countries, uh, and more than that, for Wales and Tamil Nadu within India to think about our future. So this is the first time that a health minister from Wales has been to India, and it's the uh, deliberate opportunity in the fourth year of the BAPIO initiative, uh, the medical training initiative that Keshe has mentioned, uh, to support that activity, because it's a really important activity for Wales, but also I think for India too, because we now have had a pipeline over four years of about 100 doctors each year coming into our National Health Service in Wales, uh, working for two years, they're providing direct patient care uh, because if they weren't doing that, they wouldn't get the proper learning and training opportunity. And at the end of that two years, they then return to India. So the insights and the skills, and people learn good and bad things when you learn. I certainly through my life have learned from making mistakes and getting things wrong and seeing other people do that just as getting things right. To come back and then to be able to apply that uh, to the health service here in India. Uh, and it's more than that, of course, because there's something about the relationship between India, Wales and the United Kingdom anyway, and not just about the many centuries of the past, but my own responsibility is the National Health Service was created more than 70 years ago. I was created uh, by a model from Wales by a Welsh politician, an Iron Bevan. Uh, and so we're really proud of the fact that the National Health Service in the United Kingdom was born in Wales. And 70 years ago in the United Kingdom, people still faced a choice between whether to pay their medical bills, whether to pay their heating, or whether to buy food. And that was a really difficult choice for lots and lots of families. So after the Second World War, we decided to pool our resources we decided that we would pay from taxes to create a national health service owned by the government on behalf of the people. And that meant that every single family within the United Kingdom has free healthcare. So whatever your means, whatever your social background, the national health service is there for you. There is no financial limit to the treatment you can have. It is simply about the ability of the health service to provide it. So it's a genuinely comprehensive system, and it was a really radical thing to do in the aftermath of the Second World War. And it remains a radical act to keep on funding our national health service, the collective will and effort that is required. And it's enormous. Just within Wales, a small but perfectly formed country of three and a bit million people. Uh, within the Welsh Government's budget, I spend over half of that budget, over seven billion pounds on maintaining our national health service each year. So it's a significant enterprise. It's the largest <coughs> employer within Wales. So it has a significant economic reach as a direct employer. But as all of you know, in creating and sustaining a health service, well, the health service doesn't make its own bandages. Uh, it doesn't uh, provide all its new drug treatments. So all of that activity around the health service, there's huge industrial scale level activity and the, uh, the sector's economy around it. And I have responsibility for trying to safeguard the legacy but more than that, to safeguard the future of the National Health Service. And that's where we still come back to India, because the health service would not have been created without doctors from this part of the world. The wider Indian subcontinent was really important 
in the creation of the National Health Service. There are large communities who would not have had a local health service as part of the National Health Service without doctors from this part of the world. So in coming back here with the medical training initiative, within the doctors that we know that work within the National Health Service and returned back to India for a variety of periods of time, some doctors have stayed in India too. Now, and that's part of the story. It's an international success story, the National Health Service. And in doing so, it's not just changed the nature of treatment, but I actually think that Britain and Wales certainly is a better place for having a wider variety of people to call <coughs> that part of the world their home. And to still be proud of who and what they are, just as I'm proud to be the Lord in Zambia, I'm proud to be the Minister for Health in Wales, and I'm proud that my son has heritage in corner of his mother's side in Ireland too. You can be proud of who you are call more than one part of the world your home. And the health service is very much a visible way to see that made real. So if any of you came to the United Kingdom and you do treatment, if you went to a local, a local doctor, you could well see someone from another part of the world. If you went into a hospital and you needed an operation, you would almost certainly have a number of people in different parts of the world who would be helping to treat you. And so when we think about that as our past, well, the future is that as well. And for all the success that we rightly Cling on to, we still have to think about what the future will be. So, in prudent healthcare, now the value of healthcare, not just about how much it costs, but what is the point and the purpose of delivering healthcare? What evidence is there that it's the right thing to do? Can we be sure we're not doing harm? Are we making sure we're having the right person delivering the right care at the right time? You know, we don't want highly paid uh, and skilled doctors doing work that someone much more junior can do. That's a waste of their time. They could be delivering much higher value care in a different part of our system. And that requires reform, which is difficult. And it's difficult for people to get used to working in a certain way. And to change that isn't always easy. You need leadership to do that, not just the minister. Uh, and I had the opportunity to, to meet your minister informally recently. But uh, other people across our whole system, uh, not just people like the chairman who wants to uh, enable and empower and expect people to do more and to do better, but your clinicians as well to, to talk with their peers, because I know as the minister, I'd love it if everyone did what I thought was the right thing because I'm a charming young man and they should do what I think is wrong. But actually, lots of people in the health service are not at all interested in that. Or as if one of their clinical leaders or peers says there's a better way of doing our job, and we can gain much greater value with the money and the resource we have, and it make our job a better job, well, actually, that's really powerful. Because leadership at different levels. And we need to do something that is thinking about what Bevan said, and Aaron Bevan, that famous Welshman created the National Health Service, he's quoted all the time. One of my favourite and Aaron Bevan quotes is that the National Health Service should always be inadequate. And it didn't mean it should be a bad service that treated people poorly. He meant the National Health Service should always be looking at what it can do better. What is the next discovery, the next opportunity? How do we understand the thirst for knowledge to understand that? How do we then understand how to apply that? And when we have something that is successful, how do we then transfer that across our service? A good practice not being an island, but being expected and demanded across our service, uh, but also that thirst for knowledge and innovation. So it's a big challenge, but it's a big opportunity. And that opportunity in partnership with yourselves is to share what we have learned in creating the National Health Service, the learning that comes back from people who work in our two countries, but more than that, and the signing of the MOU is part of that as well, about how we share what we think we can do together in the future. And in doing that, there is much not just for us to offer, but much for us to learn. Because I see real excellence in the provision of your facilities, the investment decisions you're making, and that never-ending challenge of what next. What can we do better tomorrow to make sure that more of our people benefit in the future? So we couldn't be proud of our shared past. The history of Indian physicians, uh, not just the doctors, but also the nurses, the therapists, are also part of our success story. We're proud of that, but prouder still of the choice that we will make together to improve the healthcare system both in Wales and the United Kingdom, but also here in India as well. It's a real pleasure to be here in India for the first time with my family as well. We've had an amazing welcome. I cannot overstate how delighted and humbled I am by the welcome we've had in every single place that we've been. But I look forward, hopefully, to coming back in the future and to celebrating more of our shared success in the world we still will choose to create. Many thanks. Meeting with uh, race, which is not common for physicians. This is uh, something like 
we, we feel proud to <coughs> have a setup where you can treat in a comprehensive manner. You need not have to refer cases to some other center to do stem cell transplant. When I have been associated with various uh, institutions from 1990s, when we did the first transplant somewhere in Northern Institute of Medical Science in Delhi, a lot of excitation just to see how it goes. That was the excitation we started. And when we started transplant, first time in Chennai, probably uh, in, uh, in uh, Apollo <coughs> hospitals. There also, again, uh, it was like the day you do the transplant, you feel good. Uh, we did something different from whatever we do for cancer patients, oncology treatment for the patients. So transplant has matured in its own way. If you go back to the history, in 10 years, initially in India, 10 cases has been done. Now, probably in a month, people are doing 10 cases in, in more BG centers. So that is the way the technology has advanced and matured. So it is not something completely new and you keep guessing how to treat. It is all established. Now you take it more further towards a different uh, line of treatment. Like you do transplant when it is a like, standard case where there is a match, it's a match donor and do a transplant for a young patient, probably you don't lose many a time uh, this type of cases, maybe less than 10% chance of losing a patient. But if you do a case where there is no match, this is a 50% match, or one or two locus mismatch, or completely unrelated, not your family member, they are the risk of losing a patient with higher side. So the technology has improved, now we dare to treat patients those who are not even 100% uh, HLA match, and we are able to get success there also. So uh, things have changed, and it is not uh, uh, something that will be surprised how to do it. It has to be uh, done in the proper way, and the uh, infrastructure should be good enough, and we are happy and we are thankful to our chairman who has given a full uh, uh to uh, units for stem cell transplant and uh, we're happy to go forward and continue with the program. Thank you very much. If, um, if my mouth was dry, I've never ever addressed such an illustrious gathering before, and those cameras make me so nervous, but let us see what you can do. So first of all, I'm extremely grateful to Chairman and to Aswin for giving us this opportunity to visit your institute and I must say it has been an eye-opener. Uh, whatever best possible facilities are there in the world, in terms of infrastructure and technology, you have managed to bring it to Chennai. And I think that's a great achievement when you can proudly say, we match the best in the world. And that's not just for your infrastructure, but in terms of your clinical uh, group, who are the top of their profession. And I was very impressed, Chairman, when this, your doctors say that you give them the free hand to do what they feel appropriate. And I wish we could say that the same uh, with a number of our hospitals where uh, unfortunately or fortunately a number of major decisions have to be taken in conjunction with our managers, which is sometimes good and sometimes can delay things. Uh, now, we are very keen and very uh, fortunate to collaborate with you in terms of mutual exchanges because there's an old Indian saying uh, I'll first say it in Hindi jungle mein moon aja kisne dekha. so who gets the pleasure of a peacock dancing in a jungle nobody sees that so if you have an area of excellence in a particular institute and unless that excellence is disseminated worldwide so that all the patients across the globe benefit from it it is of no use and I think that is where UK and in particular Wales and India and in particular Tamil Nadu which is an extremely progressive state and has been for many years can collaborate because Tamil Nadu what the minister and I have seen has got an attitude we can do it, we will do it which is in marked contrast to a number of other states. So with this attitude and the same attitude in Wales and particularly with our minister who's been an extremely capable and extremely efficient health minister, 
And not only that, extremely supportive minister for the Indian community in Wales. It's a natural synergy for both of us to come together and see where we can learn from each another. Now, uh, I know that uh, Wales has a number of uh, things we can offer to Tamil Nadu. But at the same time, I'm sure there's a number of things that you do which we can take back to our country and say how we can implement that, provide better health care to our patients. So one thing we have been doing for the past four years with the minister's active support and encouragement is taking Indian doctors to Wales, provide them with a fellowship training for two years. So these are doctors who have done their MS or MD in various specialties. So we come and interview them and then we offer them a two-year fellowship in Wales, which is a fully equipped fellowship training. We train them in surgery, medicine, or various other specialties. Uh, and that's been very, very popular amongst our students. And in fact, the reason why we're in Chennai today is because we have got about 80 to 85 doctors lined up here to be interviewed, and about 40 would have been interviewed today, and about another 40, 45 would be interviewed tomorrow. And the constant, so that there's a team of about 16 people who have come from Wales, and the constant uh, thing I hear from all of them is the caliber of your doctors is exceptional. And they often say you may not get such a good caliber sometimes when you're interviewing in UK. And that just shows that when we take them back, we are able to teach them not just the specialized techniques, but also a system-based approach of what we call evidence-based medicine. <coughs> and on that, what we have also got in Wales, which is the first in the world, is a concept of prudent healthcare. And I'm sure the minister will give you a little bit more about that. And basically, it's very simple. When you do something, is there evidence for it to be done? Does it give good results? Is it cost effective? And so on. So that is, those are the system-based, evidence-based approaches we teach the young Indian doctors. And when they come back and apply that into their practice in India, there's no question that the patients will benefit. So I'm very, very fortunate that uh, SIMS has uh, agreed work with us and we look forward to taking this ahead in a big way, finding out areas of synergies and where we can do some real good work together which can benefit both our states. So thank you very much indeed again for your attention. On behalf of the Sims family and SRM group and our chairman Mr. Vipatunitu, I welcome you all for this memorable day, uh, one more advanced, one more unplanned unit, one more unit here. And we are going to have a memorandum of understanding with College of Healthcare Innovations from United Kingdom, which is going to take a long way from here for the training the faculties, our paramedical, medical, and technical level. And professors and teachers from UK will come here, and we will also go there and train further. And here we have the Honorable Minister of Health, Mr. Juan Getting, who is the Health Minister from Wales and who has been very much interested in community service work. He has been helping the cerebral palsy children and also very much involved in healthcare service for a long way. He has brought a lot of innovations and uh, process in Wales. Thank you come for coming here, sir, for giving the opportunity and inaugurating the Bone Barrier Unit, sir. And we have our Professor Singhal, who is the senior most orthopedic consultant and who is the program director for this College of Innovations. Welcome you for coming here, sir. Thank you. Our honorable chairman and the chancellor of the SRM University, Haryana. Welcome you for coming here, sir. Thank you, sir. Professor Dr. Suri Narayan, who is the director of the Institute of Orthopedics and senior vice minister of this institute. Welcome, welcome, sir. And the Institute of Director, Dr. Ranjan Mahapatra, who is the being the who is the first person who brought the bone marrow transplant in Tamil Nadu. He went to UK in 1992 and brought more than 300 transplant years there. He is the pioneer in this field and we are extremely happy to have you, sir. Thank you. And with this introduction, I welcome you all our directors, faculties, 
medical and paramedical and my dear friends from the present media who is bringing lot of awareness and uh, facility available in different parts of our institution and throughout Tamil Nadu and we have to take this forward to the whole society and the awareness has to be go to the grassroots level then only the whole the patients can be benefited thank you for coming here sir welcome you all a show single who happens to be on, in my faculty as an orthopedic surgeon was my dear colleague uh, Dr. Rajan Mahapatra Raju Shiva Sam Vice President it's indeed a pleasure to host you this evening, sir. To this uh, occasion, which probably will bring us a bit closer to each other. Just uh, to give you a brief about this organization, Sims Hospital started about five to six years ago to start functioning from that day. I could probably easily say this concept is slightly different with a hospital with a little difference. So in a sense that our working model has been as an institute-based model rather than individuals consulting the facility, which is usually the practice in the rest of the country. I think this enables multiple minds in the same specialty to put, put their expertise and come out with services and products probably which are much more uh, relevant. And in a sense, probably we take it up to the tertiary speciality levels. So. And this has helped us immensely in this uh, also, I think with this model, this enables us to focus more also on research. I think the patient spectrum, the spectrum of diseases, problems, and options tend to be varied in various geographies. And if you put that in perspective, I think this sort of collaboration between two places is going to be an excellent sort of a breeding ground which can be exploited with the data available to probably begin newer challenges and adopt certain technologies is also already established and bring it on board. And that is our excitement in these collaborations, what we look for. So each institute can take up probably one or two of these products or projects and then break it up to the next levels in terms of collaborative research, in terms of exchange of fellows, students, medical physicians. I think that probably would be a big advantage with these collaborations. And we hope with time I think this should be brought into fruition. Responsibility without authority has often been said as meaningless. And true to this spirit, Chairman Dr. Raik Pachamotya has left the responsibility and authority entirely with the physicians. And that's the greatest biggest difference again that has brought up. And this, this sort of stimulates more activity because once you have responsibility and you have the authority, you are answerable for everything, whether you progress in the right direction or not. With this, I think I would probably thank the Chairman for probably accepting this concept, pushing it to the next level, and that's extremely important. One of this is now the bone transplant sort of blooming out now on its own subspeciality, which has also but always been existent. But in this setup probably he's taking up to the next level and this is the order of the day. I think uh, with these few words I think we welcome you again and we really expect things to move further. We from our side would be taking all the initiatives to see that we Get enough juice for what is being offered to us today.